welcome to my lecture today we are going to discuss parvovirus so in this lecture we will discuss the all aspects that is related to the parvoviruses so let's start first of all we will discuss the properties of the parvoviruses parvo means small it's mean that that virus is actually included in the smallest viruses okay so diameter of the parvovirus is actually 22 nanometers okay and the serotype of that virus is one okay and that is icosahedral means 20 sided virus okay and the genome of that virus means parvovirus is the single stranded dna and the polarity of that dna will be negative polarity okay and that virus is actually the naked or you can say non-enveloped non-enveloped viruses okay it's mean that in this virus you will see the capsid that is actually made up of proteins so outer coat will be the capsid and inside you will see the presence of the single stranded dna molecule okay next if we discuss the transmission that how parovirus transmit okay so most important respiratory route that is the more it means that that virus actually transmit to the humans to the ear and through the respiratory tract okay second is the transplacental means that virus has ability to cross the placenta means that that virus can transmit from the mother to the fetus okay and third most important is the blood because that virus most importantly infect the red cell okay specifically erythroblast immature red cell so it's mean that if the blood transfused to the person then that virus can be transmitted through the blood as well okay if we discuss the epidemiology that is the most important that virus actually present worldwide okay and the most importantly people of the age 18 years or older people have antibodies against these viruses okay and the most important reservoir of the parvovirus is the human but keep remember that the canine parvovirus actually infect the animals and that viruses would not infect the humans okay that is most important thing if we discuss the replication cycle of that virus so first of all these virus will infect the red blood cell okay now this is the parvo virus okay now this parvo virus will specifically attach to the host receptor and that receptor will be present on the red blood cell in the form of the p antigen okay that is the p antigen okay it will attach to the p antigen that is actually present on the surface of the rbcs okay and in the rbcs you will see the nucleus okay now that is very much important thing about the rbcs so mature rbcs don't have any nucleus but the immature rbcs you or you can say erythroblast have rbcs so it's mean that parvovirus most importantly infect the erythroblast immature red blood cells that are actually present in the bone marrow okay so first of all this virus will enter okay and here is the single stranded dna so after entering the uncoating of the single stranded dna single stranded dna now it will enter into the nucleus and whole process or whole replications of that virus will happen inside the nucleus okay what will happen so basically this is the single stranded dna okay that is the most important thing first of all that dna single stranded dna will convert into the double stranded dna okay with the help of the 
host DNA polymerase. Okay, that will use the host DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase. Okay, after that, you will see the application of the double stranded DNA. Okay, that will go toward the replication of the genomic material that is the dna okay and it will go further and form the messenger rna okay and from the messenger rna you will see the formations of the proteins that is the most important thing specifically the capsid proteins formed by this way okay now virus require two most important thing first one is the genomic material and second is the protein that will be uh, formed by the double stranded dna okay now in the replication you will see again that is actually most important will fit into the progeny virus that will again convert into the single stranded dna okay now after that you will see the virus will form inside the nucleus okay here is the virus okay surrounded by the capsid and inside the virus you will see the single stranded dna okay after that it will release from the cells okay that is the most important thing that we have to remember about the applications of the parvovirus b19 okay if we discuss the pathogenesis so most importantly they will affect the most two most important cells okay as we have discussed they will affect the red blood cell specifically erythroblast means that they will infect the immature rbcs in the bone marrow okay and due to the infection of the erythroblast in the bone marrow you will see aplastic anemia a plastic anemia in which you will see the all lineage lineage of the uh, bone marrow will reduce okay and second most important thing they will also infect the endothelium of the blood vessel okay when they infect the endothelium they will go toward the rash or you will see the formations of the rash because they also affect the blood vessels as well okay if we discuss the immunity so if you see here virus and against the virus you will see the formations of the antibodies okay you can see the formation of the igg or you can see the formation of the antibody igm in the early infection you will see the formation of igm antibodies and later you will see the igg antibodies okay so virus and the antibodies form the immune complex immune complex formations by the virus and the antibodies now this immune complex do some more important thing okay this immune complex can cause the rash okay and this immune complex can cause the arthritis in the adult arthritis that is actually caused by the immune complex formation and the immunity that is provided by the parvovirus will be lifelong immunity okay so that is the most important aspects of the immunity of the parvovirus okay if we discuss the clinical finding so most important thing that is related to the parvovirus and the most important symptom is the erythema erythema infectiosum okay infectiosum or you can say fifth disease or you can say that is the slab chick syndrome okay here are basically the different names of the uh, macular rash erythema infectiosum fifth disease okay that is actually 
lie in the fifth number uh, that is related to the macular uh, rash and the slab cheek syndrome it means that you will see the bright red rash on the cheeks bilaterally on the both cheeks specifically you will see that syndrome in the childhood okay and you will also see the low grade fever low grade fever in this case or you can also see the runny nose or you say coryza and the sore throat sore throat here are basically the different aspects of the erythema infectiosa okay next you will see the arthritis okay next is the arthritis so basically in the arthritis as we have discussed you will see the formations of the immune complexes and immune complexes will affect the small joints specifically hands and the feet bilaterally on the both hands and the both feet okay and that arthritis will look like the rheumatoid arthritis okay so in this case you will see the joint pain in the arthritis okay that is actually caused by the immune complex formation hepatitis b in the hepatitis b you will also see the arthritis that is actually caused by the immune complex formation okay so that that is the second thing and third thing is the if you see here that is the fetal infection so as we have discussed that parvovirus can transmit from the mother to the fetus okay so if we categorize into three first is the first trimester second trimester and the third trimester okay if the fetus infect in the first trimester then what will happen then in that case you will see ultimately the death of the fetus death of the baby there is no chance of the survive of the baby okay that is the if the fetus infect in the first trimester if the fetus infect in the second trimester then that fetus will go toward the hydrops fetalis hydrops fetalis you will see the severe edema of the fetus that is the hydrops fetalis okay and in the third trimester if the fetus infect in the third trimester then you will see no as such clinical symptoms okay so important thing that why parvovirus do not cause the congenital abnormalities because in majority cases you will see the congenital abnormalities happens in the first trimester and you will see the death of the baby and ultimately if there is no baby then there is no congenital abnormalities uh, presented in that baby okay and next is the that is the chronic b19 okay infection why do you call it b19 because actually it was discovered in the micro titer plate that is used in the elisa okay that is why this virus is actually called the parvovirus b19 okay in the parvovirus b19 infection that will happen mostly in immunocompromised patients so in immunocompromised patient you will see patient those patient who will take the chemotherapy transplant patients and the hiv infected patient so basically in immunocompromised patient you will see the hiv patients you can see the chemotherapy or you can say the uh, transplant okay so in the in these patients you will see the most important bone marrow suppression okay that is due to the chronic b19 infection so in that case you will see the rbcs reduction of the rbcs okay wbcs and the platelets 
So ultimately, if the RBCs count reduce, then it will go toward the anemia. If the WBCs count low, then it will go toward the leukopenia. And if the platelets count decrease, then it will go toward the thrombocytopenia. So here are basically you will see that all the three lineage of the bone marrow will reduce in the chronic B19 infection. Okay. And last most important is the, the aplastic anemia. Okay. That is the A plastic anemia. So you will see the A plastic anemia mostly in the uh, chronic anemia patients, like you will see those patients, uh, sickle cell anemia patient, thalassemia patients, or spherocytosis patients. That is the most important. Those patients that are actually infected by these diseases, sickle cell, thalassemia, spherocytosis, that will the severity of the aplastic anemia happens in these patients, sickle cell anemia, thalassemia, spherocytosis. If those patients that normal RBCs and normal person affected by the parvovirus, then you will never see the aplastic anemia in those patients. You will see the aplastic anemia only in those patients that are actually affected by these diseases, sickle cell, thalassemia and spherocytosis. That is the most important. So here are basically the five clinical finding that is the macular rash, erythema infectiosum, arthritis, fetal infection, chronic B19 infection and the aplastic anemia. If we discuss the lab diagnosis, so most important is the serology test, serology test in which you will detect the IgM antibodies in the aplastic anemia in the erythema infectiosum. Okay. So, or you can go toward the PCR. Okay. If you want to do PCR of the fetus, then you will take the amniotic fluid and do the PCR. And you can also do the PCR in immunocompromised patient because in the immunocompromised patient, you will never see the antibodies. So in that case, we will go toward the PCR instead of the serology test. And last is the treatment. There is no specific treatment related to the parvovirus. No specific treatment. Okay. If we discuss the prevention, so you can prevent the parvovirus by the pooled immunoglobulins, mean antibodies, okay, in the immunocompromised patients. And there is no as such chemo prophylaxis or there is no vaccine related to the parvovirus. So this is all about the parvovirus. If you still have any question, you may ask in the comment section. Thank you so much.